Welcome to Wild Harvest Heroes. In today's episode, we dive into the exhilarating world of trophy hunting with Big Buck Bonanza, tracking and bagging trophy whitetails. Join us as we uncover expert tips, cutting edge gear, and the most effective strategies to track and secure those majestic whitetails. Whether you're a seasoned hunter or just starting out, this is your ultimate guide to a successful hunt. Let's get started. Hunting Big Woods Hunting the big woods breaks down into three basic techniques. Tracking, still hunting, and stand hunting, each of which has its own advantages. The system works for any type of big woods hunter. It all starts with knowledge. Knowledge is important because knowledge, confidence, is equals to success. Hunting methods. Stand hunting, still hunting, and tracking are all effective methods of hunting in the big woods. Because deer densities are generally lower in the big woods, a hunter must employ the principles that I call the three Ps. These principles are practice, patience, and persistence. Big woods hunters know the success rate is low so making the most of an opportunity is critical. The opportunity for a shot may come and go in a matter of seconds. You must practice your shooting enough to make it become second nature and your gun needs to become an extension of your arms. To do this, you need to find a gun and action that fits you and practice with it. I've seen way too many bucks get away from my clients over the years because they were fumbling with their safety or their scope didn't fit them right. Shooting is not the only thing to practice. There are plenty of things that you can practice outside of the season, so you'll be on top of your game when it's time hit the woods. Some things are simple to practice like walking in the woods. Learn to walk quietly by knowing what things make noise when you step on them. Learn how to navigate easily in the woods by using the lay of the land. Practice your map and compass skills. Learn how to start a fire easily in any weather conditions. If you practice these things before the season starts, you will be ready for anything when the time comes to concentrate on hunting. Hunting in the big woods also takes plenty of patience. If you are a stand hunter, you will not see deer filing by your stand all day like you see on the TV shows. You will not be trying to catch a buck traveling from a bedding to a feeding area. You will have to wait patiently along a travel corridor where there may be a signpost rub or a scrape line and catch a buck traveling between the doe areas. I have had clients sit on stand day after day without seeing a deer and becoming discouraged. The hunters that stuck with it until the end would quite often get a shot at a buck. Having patience also holds true while still hunting or tracking. I have to admit that patience is not one of my attributes. I can't count the times that I spooked the buck I was after because I was too anxious to take the next step or try to see over the next ridge. As I get older, I have finally realized that slowing down and having a little patience is a lot easier. The third P is persistence, which is the most important one of all. Persistence means that you never give up or throw the towel in. It is an inherent human trait to give up on things when encountering resistance. It could be anything from a mountain hike to the latest diet, it's just easier to give up. You might plan on sitting in your stand all day, but by noon you decided to go back to camp and sit by the fire. You might have planned to still hunt over a mountain to the swamp on the other side, but halfway up the mountain you got tired and turned around. You may be on the track of an old buck, and when he crosses a stream you leave the track because the water is over your boots. These things are all easy to do and maybe you have done some of them. The best advice I can give any hunter that takes to the big woods is to be persistent. Persistence will overcome any shortcomings that you may have. Stay on the stand that you took all the time scout, that buck will eventually show up. Get up over the mountain and down to the swamp, and you just might bump into a buck. Find a way to get across that stream, and you just might catch that buck laying in his bed on the other side. I think the old 80-20 rule applies to hunting. 20% of the hunters kill 80% of the bucks, and I believe those are the hunters that are the most persistent. Big Woods Bucks was founded on the principles of providing hunters with a knowledge base through our books and videos, as well as providing clothing and gear to make them better and more successful hunters. How to Track a Buck in the Big Woods The Art of Tracking In the modern whitetail world of food plots, trail cams, and tree stands, the art of tracking down a buck is becoming a forgotten practice. Yet in states like Vermont and Maine, where deer densities are often less than one buck per square mile, and finding the right spot to set a stand is like playing a life-size game of Where's Waldo. Tracking remains an efficient and rewarding way to find a trophy buck. Additionally, 
Having tracked bucks from New England and New York to Indiana, Montana, and Wyoming, I can say that for hunters who like to walk, the technique will work anywhere you have wide swaths of country, big bucks, and most importantly, snow. Snow is vital to successful tracking. Although it is possible to find and follow tracks on bare ground, snow allows you to determine whether the tracks you're seeing belong to a trophy buck and to follow them quickly enough to catch up. According to Hal Blood, legendary deer tracker and author of the book Hunting Big Woods Bucks, being able to identify big buck tracks is the most crucial skill a deer tracker can have. You gotta know that the tracks in front of you were not only made by a buck, but that they were made by a buck worth following. They're easy enough to identify once you've had a little practice, Blood said. A big buck's footprints will obviously be bigger than other deer tracks, but there's more to it than that. Big bucks walk a certain way, sort of with a swagger where they swing their legs outward. They'll have a long stride, drag their feet a bit, and the dew claws will be perpendicular to the hoofprint. There are other signs to look for to determine whether the tracks you're seeing belong to a buck. They'll leave impressions in the snow with their antlers when they put their heads down to feed or sniff at scrapes and go around tight gaps in the trees or areas with a lot of thick brush where their antlers may get caught up as they're walking. Unlike does who squat down to urinate, bucks pee on the move, splattering sign across the snow. Such indications can tell you that you're on the trail of a buck and even give you an idea of what his antlers look like. But you can only really find these signs by following the tracks. When you first start out, you're not a tracker, you're a track follower, Blood said. But if you keep at it and learn to read the sign, eventually it becomes second nature. You'll be able to see the tracks, know they're from a good buck, and know they're fresh enough to follow. Identifying the freshness of buck tracks is vital to success. You don't want to waste your time following the trail of a buck you won't be able to catch up to. The best way to do this is by following the weather. Knowing when snow has fallen, how much has accumulated, and how much has melted in the past few days will give you at least an idea of when the buck made the track. Fresh tracks will have sharp, clearly defined edges and not be melted out in warm weather or filled with snow when none has recently fallen. Getting on the trail. Finding fresh buck tracks in large chunks of otherwise empty forests can be one of the most difficult aspects of tracking. Trackers like Hal Blood spend a lot of time in the woods on foot before, during and after the season, scouting out spots and taking note of areas that have produced in the past or seem like they have big buck potential. I have particular areas I like, so I try to get to where I want to be early in the morning so that I'm in the woods at daylight, Blood said. If I'm striking off to find a track, I'll head up to the top of a ridge and then walk the length of it because the bucks are usually going to come off one side or another. Once I cut a good trail, I'll see where it takes me. This is an efficient way to find a good buck track when you know the area and have had a lot of time to scout. However, if you're in new and unfamiliar ground during the season, it's still possible to find and track down a big buck by covering ground quickly and finding tracks or potential hunting spots from a vehicle. I put in a lot of road work when I'm checking out unfamiliar territory, expert deer tracker Rodney Elmer said. Elmer, along with his sons Taylor, Ryan and Casey, host the Mountain Deer YouTube channel and podcast. Almost everywhere you go in the woods, there's a sort of chalkboard of old logging roads or trails that you can drive a truck or ATV around in and learn about. Elmer especially likes to scout from a vehicle when he's with multiple hunters because he can drop them off in a section of woods and then drive around to another area to pick them up and make a plan for the rest of the day, depending on whether or not they found a good buck track. Becoming a tracker. By the following season, I was out of the stand and on the trail. Tracking works because it allows you to rely on your own woodsmanship for success and completely immerses you in a buck's hidden world. From a buck's tracks you get to see where he likes to go, what he likes to eat, whether he's looking for or following a doe, and where he likes to bed down. Tracking takes the guesswork out of deer hunting. You never have to wonder where the buck is because he's right in front of you. And if you read the sign and keep your chin up, you'll catch up with him soon enough. Tips for bagging big bucks. A successful deer hunter must know how deer behave in the wild, have been close enough to deer to bag them and have amassed a wealth of knowledge about how to find and take deer from in the field experience. Let's look at some tips for bagging a big buck. Know you have a big buck to hunt. Even if you're the best hunter in the nation, you won't be able to take a big buck, 
if you don't know there's a trophy buck on the property where you hunt. To determine if a trophy buck is on that land, go into the woods after the deer have shed their antlers, and look for trophy racks. If you find a big set of antlers that have been shed, you can assume that a trophy buck is on that property. Also, enter your hunting area before deer season, and start to scout then. Try to see a big buck before hunting pressure drives him to cover Chattanoogan.com. Chattanooga's source for breaking local news home, leisure time outdoors, tips for bagging big bucks. Thursday, December 9th, 2010. J. Wayne Fears. A successful deer hunter must know how deer behave in the wild, have been close enough to deer to bag them, and have amassed a wealth of knowledge about how to find and take deer from in the field experience. Let's look at some tips for bagging a big buck. Know you have a big buck to hunt. Even if you're the best hunter in the nation, you won't be able to take a big buck if you don't know there's a trophy buck on the property where you hunt. To determine if a trophy buck is on that land, go into the woods after the deer have shed their antlers and look for trophy racks. If you find a big set of antlers that have been shed, you can assume that a trophy buck is on that property. Also, enter your hunting area before deer season and start to scout then. Try to see a big buck before hunting pressure drives him to cover. Hunters need to go into the woods throughout the year to search for and study deer. Then you can collect information before the season begins and after it ends about what deer are on the property for you to hunt, as well as what routes the deer travel and the food sources they use. Another way to find out if you have a trophy buck on your hunting lands is to talk to the people who drive up and down the roads through the woodlot where you plan to hunt. Loggers, mailmen, school bus drivers, and people normally traveling through your hunting region while driving back and forth to work and school, often will see and know the whereabouts of a big buck. If shining deer at night is legal in your state, it is not legal in Tennessee. Go into the woods and fields at night with a light before and after the season to see deer. But make sure you're not violating the law in the state where you hunt. An important safety practice is to notify the local conservation officer as to where you'll be on the night you plan to look for deer, and let him know what you're doing. To take a trophy deer you must have a big deer to hunt. Have a thorough knowledge of the property you hunt. You must understand the lay of the land you hunt, including the land's contours, where the creeks and the streams run, and where the roads go through the property. You also need to know the traditional movement patterns of the deer on that property, because deer on any woodlot will establish routes of travel. Once you understand what those historical routes are, you can go to that same land year after year and find deer. If you spend your time learning one piece of property thoroughly, you'll bag more big deer more consistently than those who hunt three or four different locations during a season. The only exception to this rule is the trophy deer hunter who can travel to Texas, Mexico, Alberta, or some of the other areas where trophy bucks are much more abundant than they are in most regions of the United States. Most of us are looking for better places to hunt, rather than learning the best spots to hunt on the properties we have to hunt. Understand how to hunt the rut. To take a trophy buck, you need to have as much time as possible to hunt that buck during the peak of the rut, which is when the trophy buck is the most vulnerable and is most likely to be bagged. However, the time of the peak of the rut is different in each state, and may vary even inside the state. Therefore, the best way to know when the peak of the rut occurs in the state, and the particular place you plan to hunt, is to contact the state wildlife biologist in your area. Ask for copies of studies or information that may have been compiled by wildlife scientists that will show you when the peak of the rut is in the region you want to hunt. 2. Remember that once an animal becomes a trophy buck, he'll primarily move at night because he's learned that there's less danger then, and that he can move more freely and safely at night than in the daytime. When hunting season begins, this trophy buck becomes more sensitized to human activity and more secretive and harder to locate. But when the rut occurs, the urge to reproduce supersedes his natural caution for a short time. He'll either be searching for or pursuing an estrus doe during daylight hours, which make this buck easier for the hunter to take. Thanks for joining us on this thrilling adventure here at Wild Harvest Heroes. We hope you enjoyed our Big Buck Bonanza Tracking and Bagging Trophy Whitetails episode. If you found our tips and insights helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more expert hunting content. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. Until next time, happy hunting and stay wild.